Hi, this is Dr. Dan Ritchie again, Functional Aging Institute President, and today I've got J.R. Burgess with me, and J.R. is actually the uh, Vice President and CEO of Rejuve Medical, and I am throwing the screen to him as I introduce him. J.R. is actually a Functional Aging Institute Advisory Board member. He's uh, been on our board since the very beginning and he will be attending our Functional Aging Summit in June, and I believe we are working out for him to do a uh, sponsored session there on the future of healthcare, uh, similar to this webinar, so that will be exciting. Uh, I've known JR for, oh man, five or six years now in the fitness industry, and his story really is, is pretty cool, how he went from a Gold's Gym to now a multi-million dollar uh, medical fitness operation. And so I'm really gonna let him kind of share his story with you and, and the future of healthcare. So JR, thanks for doing this for us. I'm honored to be on here, thank you so much. I really appreciate the opportunity to share what we've done, um, my passion for medical fitness and where it began. And um, really looking forward to, to being able to share that with, with each of you on here. So thank you for your time tonight. So as the, the slide shows is exercise is medicine, just like Functional Aging Institute really needing to shift towards the, the growing population of what will be needed in the future. And for our families, we believe um, much alike in the fact that we believe with a healthcare population that is getting more obese, we're getting sicker as a nation together, that we really need to put emphasis on how we can fix the healthcare crisis, and we believe exercise and nutrition is the best medicine for that. So what I'm going to go over today is a little bit of where healthcare is at now and kind of what the, the physicians can do, and some of this is going to come from a medical perspective of, of what the medical world needs to do to, to bring this forward, and then we'll get a little more into our model, how just like Dr. Ritchie said at the beginning where I started at Gold's Gym and then integrated with a practice in what we've done in that time and then how we need like-minded people who believe in the same um, training styles and philosophies to join these practices to help make a difference in driving exercise as medicine initiative forward and why right now just like the, the Functional Aging Institute is a perfect time to, to really jump ahead of, of where this trend is going and, and help make a difference. So when we look at healthcare now, it's, it's obvious that obesity is on the rise, matched hand in hand with disease. Prescription drugs continue to be um, prescribed out on a, on a steady incline. At the same time, healthcare costs are continuing to rise as well as reimbursements are being cut in healthcare, making it more cost prohibitive for, for medical practices to survive. And then bundled pay, payments and outcome-based quality measures are the future. So what I mean by that is in the future, they're just gonna look at a patient as having diabetes. They're gonna measure clinical successes based on who can either better manage or maintain that from going to the hospital, from having further metabolic syndrome, or disease, so who can better manage that at the lower cost in giving contract in, in um, higher reimbursements to those clinics to do a better job, which leads to managed care. In fact, our nation in the world is faced with the obesity crisis, and it's on the rise. It's estimated that one in two by 2020 will be considered obese. Up to 70% right now statistics are showing that are overweight in obese in America right now. That's almost three quarters of the population have a BMI over 25 and above. It is the leading cause of preventable, preventable death in the world right now, and, in, and now according to the American Medical Association is considered a disease. Overweight patients do cost the healthcare system 40% more than healthy patients, and as a reported study from 2008, physical inactivity is costing the healthcare system more than $102 billion annually. And spending drugs was $259.1 billion in 2010 and, and expected to double by 2020. It's inevitable that there is a health care crisis at hand stemming from the obesity epidemic and we cannot continue to support the rising costs in health care and a whole implosion is inevitable. Much like the housing market we've seen 10 years ago that things were continuing to grind, prices were inflated and it was it was well projected that eventually that bubble was going to burst. 
same thing in healthcare. We know there's a problem. The government's working on it, the pharmaceutical companies, everybody's looking at and pointing to reasons of what we can do, but the one thing we must consider is 90% of all chronic disease is preventable. It's, we need to start looking and targeting the root causes to truly change healthcare and decrease costs. When we look at what's happening from a personal standpoint in that 90% that's controllable, most of it is related to our lifestyle. If we have extra body weight, we're having poor nu nutrition habits more than we're eating good, that we're lacking movement, our lifestyle choices such as smoking, drinking, drugs, alcohol, if we're not controlling at a, at a, a balanced rate. When we look at stresses, physically, emotional, and environmental, so are we balancing life? Are we overworking? Are we putting too much demand on the body? And then in our healthcare model, we, we put a lot of intensive efforts on focus and on the endocrinology and nutrient imbalance. So when we see a patient and they come in and get their labs tested, if they're very low in vitamin D or their thyroid isn't optimal or they, they lack testosterone, very hard for the body to change and lose, lose body fat. So we put a lot of focus on to naturally balancing and medically changing hormones and micronutrients to optimize people's performance and how they feel and look and be able to get the results that they need. So when I was working at a trainer at Golds, I always focused on nutrition and, and sound progressive exercise to help get people results. But truly until I partnered within the clinical realm, I really didn't realize the, the uh, results I could get. I thought when people just had poor cravings, I didn't realize that if their body's producing all this cortisol, that it would affect their cravings, or they didn't have the motivation or energy that could stem from hormone or cortisol deficiencies that don't allow people to feel and, ha and, and manage their cravings. So a lot of that affects how we're going to get outcomes in the gym, and when we combine that science with training, really helped us get better outcomes than I was ever able to do personally on my own. Then there's much, much more studies on, on genetics and how this plays a role in the controllable. So there's new um, evidence and research, and it just won the Nobel Prize a few years on telomere length. So your telomere lengths determine the longevity of, of where we live to. When our telomeres, there are a certain length and strand, as they shrink, we're naturally aging, and when they disappear, that means when our time is there. There's things that we can do to lengthen our telomere. So poor lifestyle choices shorten them, but there's things, supplements and nutraceuticals and, and decisions we can make in our life that help lengthen our te telomeres. There's more and more evidence on epigenetics. So not only now when we're making nutrient, poor nutrient choices in our bodies, it's not just affecting us. If we are overweight and continue to eat unhealthy and not making positive change and we're having children, those genetics get passed down for generations to come. So it's important for not only our own health, but for our families and lifestyles ahead that we make positive change. Then we look at aging and trauma to the body. Those are the uncontrollable things. We're naturally going to age. If we get in a car accident and have whiplash, those are some of the things that naturally are going to have our body break down. But what do we fight? How do we fight back? Is today currently most of our prescriptions are treating the factors. When you're menopausal, they're going to give you depression medications um, or primarin. When you're, you're hormonal, going through menopause, they just give medications. After birth, they just give medications right now. So hypertension, diabetes, here's your metformin. So instead of treating factors and symptoms, which you have to do in life-saving intervention, the goal is to focus on the cause, the activity level, the diet, genetics, but not new drugs and solution or drugs and surgery. So when we partner with physicians, when I'm going out and speaking and lecturing, it's really trying to inspire physicians that they have a role as healers. They took an oath to take care of patients and instead of obesity, diabetic, and metabolic syndrome being treated with the pharmaceuticals, the first line treatment in education and conversation should start with nutrition and exercise, not just another medication. If somebody comes in with chronic pain, arthritis or degeneration, it shouldn't be chronic med pain medications, um, steroid shots that just cover it up. We need to get to the root cause. The goal is to restore function through therapy, training. Um, we do a lot of regenerative injections such as PRP and stem cells to help regenerate tissue, but not more steroids and pain medications that are just covering up the symptoms. Obesity and back pain go hand in hand. We do a lot in corporate wellness. The fact of the matter is this is the most common and debilitating injury in the workplace. And just simply 
having a higher BMA, BMI increases in step with the back pain risk that one's going to have. Normal BMI has a 2.9% risk for, for back pain, 5.2 for overweight, 7.7 for obese, and 11.6 for ultra obese. Also, when patients lack sufficient exercise, supporting structures in the back do become weak and stiff, increasing the risk of degeneration and injury. And the only way to keep a healthy back is through movement that, that generates the, the spinal fluid to go through the body and distributes nutrients throughout the entire spine and body. In fact, overweight in, individuals are at increased risk, but the amount of time they spend in moderate activity by just less than 20 minutes per day can reduce the back pain by 32%. So as we age and or overweight, we are more likely to get that degeneration arthritis in our knees, in our back, in our shoulders, but just moving alone 20 minutes a day can truly reduce the risk greatly. Hey, JR, um, would it bother you if you went to full slideshow and, and didn't see your next slides coming up? Is that something you could you could do. Um, we've got. Uh, I could try. I, I'm not the <laughs> tech wizard. Um, we got a few folks. I, I think. I tried doing that. Right. We got a few. Start getting distracted and looking ahead. No, no, no. I think just visually they they want the slides a little bigger. So I'm I'm not I'm not going to tease them for their uh, for their 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 visual uh, troubles. But uh, yeah, click click on the swap presenter view and slideshow. See what you get. Um, it's you want to you okay. want to go. Yeah, there you go. That, that's that's full us, screen. All right, yeah, thank yeah, you. That's going to give that's us scary. That. I thought I was going to lose it all, but that <laughs> works. No, that's going to give us a little better, uh, a little better uh, visual. So, so carry on, doing great. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate it. So, when we look at at the physician's role continued, the fact of the matter is, the weight loss industry is booming, as you all know. People are going to go from one diet to the next, to one pill to the next, to rejoining that gym, starting, stopping, starting, stopping, and the, the proof is in the pudding. 86% of obese patients wanted to lose weight and will continue to try, and 62% felt that their physician would be in the ideal po position to help with that weight loss. So when we look at what's happened over the course of time, from 1996 to, 19, to 2007, uh, an overweight or obese person getting counseling by their physician dropped by 41%. While at the same time, during that study pe period, the obesity rates have soared. And the sad part and the most, most dramatic that, that is shocking to me is the decline was even greater for people with hypertension, diabetes, and metabolic syndrome. These are the, the population that, that, that most need and could benefit from the weight loss counseling. And only 29 to 42% have reported that they've been counseled by their physicians. So I have a pastor that we, we do our yearly Biggest Loser competition. I know the Biggest Loser gets a bad rap for what they're doing to patients. Now, we've just done it for the last six years and it's popular in our, our town. But he started, and, and I go back to training for the, for this time, one, one time per year. And he came in all tired one morning and said, what's going on, Mr. Doug? And he, he mentioned to me, well, I just got done with the sleep test, so I had to stay up all night. But they put me on the treadmill and after three minutes, I was out of breath and tired, and they said I need to have this machine. I said, well, that's good. That, that will help you. You sleep at night, so that way you have better energy to keep, keep going here, but I'm going to help you get off that machine. And, and I said, so was your physician, you know, did he recommend you come here? And I'm happy you're already going and everything. He says he didn't say anything. And I was just blown away. So here's somebody in three minutes, they have their health, and, and needing a, a, a device to, to help better sleep and stay alive, and not even one mention from the physician. So I look at the physician taking an oath and trying to take care of our patients, and we just ignore that and don't say anything. That's a disservice in my mind, but that's sad what, what society has can't come to in health care. And maybe it's because they think people don't listen or that they don't have time or whatever, but I don't know how that, that can happen. And that's sad because patients who were counseled by their physicians were more, more motivated to attempt weight loss and had better understanding of their health risk and three times more likely to attempt the weight loss and those reported not receiving that advice. So according to American Association of Family Practice, physicians are in the ideal and best position, in my opinion, to reverse the skyrocketing obesity rates because of the unique role that they play in the healthcare system. So when we look at an authoritative source, the president's known as a strong authoritative source, and just behind that, physicians have the number one authoritative source in America so just for instance, when I was that trainer at Gold Gym, I would tell people all day long, got to eat better and exercise. But when that physician says, Mrs. Jones, you have diabetes, this is so important, 
that you start taking your lifestyle in your hands and focus on exercising and eating better if you're really looking to get off these medications and live a fulfilled and long life and not be at such a high risk of heart attack, stroke, or, or further, further complications. So I encourage the physicians all day that we have a self-responsibility to take action. We can't wait on the government, our American Accountability Act, or any of these different things when the physicians can simply just start recommending to their patients. So it doesn't have to be anything crazy. All of these encounters can happen right at the time of the visit. It doesn't have to be offensive conversations or awkward if the physicians could simply ask two questions and put this in their EMR or in their template. On average, how many days a week do you engage in moderate to strenuous exercise? On average, how many minutes? So if there's a, I don't engage in any exercise or movement, it could be a prescription. Well, Mrs. Jones, I don't know if you know, but just walking three times a week on your own can be the prevention of metabolic syndrome or diabetes. So they may not be ready for CrossFit or, or crazy gym workouts or anything, but just simply start moving and giving them a prescription and meeting people where they're at. If they're sedentary, they're elderly, just working with a trained professional that knows what they're doing. But it is time for a change. Because of where the healthcare is going, something naturally has to happen. And it's estimated in the next 10 years, every healthcare organization will have to have a facility and program dedicated to prevention and treatment of, of lifestyle-related diseases. So this leads me to a couple of questions. Which direction will healthcare take? Is it more drugs? Is it more surgery? Is it more accountability? And when they do just a corporate wellness um, plan just came out with the ACA Act, now employers are having to pay for the cost of any employee that does have a BMI over 30. And they are, in half the states, allowing preventative medicine to take shape. And these are programs that incorporate exercise and nutrition. And there's other associations like the Medical Fitness Association that are really focusing to try to bridge that gap. But there's very few truly integrated models. So that begs the question is, what actually is medical fitness? I believe it's the solution to the healthcare crisis when we bridge that gap and bring exercise and nutrition with medicine and in these facilities. So it's, it's exercise that is medically supervised. If somebody straight out of cardiac rehab or very high risk, they should be monitored professionally. But it's weight optimization. So we're not just trying to lose that weight. We're trying to gain lean muscle mass and lose fat. That is what healthy weight loss is. It's healthy nutrition services through a nutritionist, a dietitian, or online programs. It's hormone optimization, as I mentioned in the onset. We're really trying to optimize somebody, not just put, provide cover-ups or normal range, but how do we make somebody feel the best? When you look at vitamin D in Minnesota, most of us would go to our normally family practice doctor and be normal, but optimal is up to 80. So that's things that there's a difference in functional medicine versus traditional medicine. Avoiding food sensitivities, as a lot of trainers are having recognized, you know, the, the gluten, the, the dairy out there that is really affecting and, and a lot of patients are, are highly sensitive to. So you can do removals, you can do tests and genetic testing that determine, but the key in role in weight loss is a healthy gut. There's also, you know, the, the, the correlation of good sleep with weight loss and feeling your best and having the motivation because the body breaks down when we're not able to recover. So that's really focusing on stress and adrenal control. And then regenerative procedures. These injuries don't, yes, we can do corrective exercise and form, but if there is you know, a chunk of meniscus missing or articulate damage to the cartilage, we can now do procedures, which you're seeing much, many more professional athletes and almost all, every orthopedic practice now getting into regenerative therapies such as PRP and stem cells. And then corporate wellness. How do we combine to, yes, the masses in a, in a corporate setting may not all want to choose weight loss, but how do we give them you know, online resources and, and, and educational seminars and webinars to where we can just start planting seeds and, and getting out to there and educating people on, on how lifestyles can impact and places to start that start on behavioral and mindful eating and food awareness. So when we look at all these different things, these are everything all of us are doing. We all probably do personal training, group training, nutritional coaching, health coaching, small groups. It doesn't matter. This can be integrated in any healthcare setting to still have the same programs that we do in health, but what bridging the gap is, is getting these systems to talk to each other. So if I'm doing personal training and somebody rolls their ankle, how do I communicate to that electronic medical records if they're in my facility that if they're going to see our, our physician, Dr. Baumgartner here is, Sally, you know, has a, a bad back and it hasn't been any better since she's been here. We've lost 20 pounds. Let's see what she can do. That way when Dr. Baumgartner sees her, 
she's able to say, he's able to say, I'm so proud of you. You've lost weight. Congratulations. You're working on this. I know you're in pain. I'm going to do everything in my power to help get you fixed up. And then I'm going to communicate back to our physical therapists, our trainers, the do's and don'ts, so we make sure not to aggravate this and can progress you and do corrective exercises and move you down, uh, move you um, through through your your program smoothly. As you guys know, movement is medicine, and that's staying segregated so our body can handle the, the changing and the demands and the force of our body symmetry. So we're, we have the balance and coordination to catch ourselves in, in Minnesota and we slip on the ice here as the snow's melting, to have the flexibility to bend down and pick up that box or get off the ground with our children and have that, that, that mobility and the stability to stand on one leg and pick that box out of the, clo out of the, the closet. But if we're not there and we don't have this, this is going to affect the quality of life. And sometimes people need the prescription from a physical therapist, a personal trainer who understands corrective exercise, progression, and balance. And then there's different technological needs for some groups that do want a hands-off approach that does help. But I'm, I'm more of a form believer of, of functional and corrective exercise, but that, that's just me. So, a few years ago, we were really looked out as out, outside the box when we opened up Rejuve six years ago. We were doing regenerative therapies, which was looked at there. Functional medicine six years ago didn't have quite there. And nobody in our area really had medical fitnesses there. So a lot of physicians, it was hard to get referrals, so I had to work really hard to get out there and get to the consumers, went to the masterminds. That's how I met Dan and Cody, to really learn how to market and connect with the audience and build relationships and learn how to market the right way. And we, we won an award that we are really proud of. So I want to just take a minute and show you a little bit about our facility here and how we've evolved over the last few years. Those opportunities, however you want to look at it. So what happened is I was working for Abbott Northwestern. I was a physician there doing sports medicine and non sports kids. And Abbott Northwestern decided to leave town and go back to Minneapolis. And I decided to stay in town. You know, I like to stay clouded. This is where I'm going with. So different and create a healthcare model that I think kind of fixed our broken healthcare system. I wanted to create a healthcare model that focused on disease prevention, that would focus on as opposed to doing a surgery if it wasn't needed or injecting cortisone or taking chronic pain medication. Because there's something we can do for pain and arthritis to help the body heal itself. And that's basically where we could take you know, cells where we take PRP, which is platelet-rich plasma, or we can do a stem cell procedure where we take a bone marrow harvest, take your stem cells, take those cells out of the body which have the potential to heal and repair, and we put those cells into the part of the body that's breaking down, whether it's knee arthritis, you know, back pain, hip arthritis. So that was my love with let's regenerate the body. And science was there, technology was there, it was all there to ready to be done. So with my training as a non-surgical specialist, it was right in my wheelhouse. We've been able to take a concept that healthcare could be delivered better and actually turn it into a system. That's allowed us to grow from just a couple passionate providers and trainers to 70 employees. And when you create a system, now we can have that same success that we've had and share it with the world. We believe we've created a system that can be duplicated that will change millions of lives in a model that is needed for our families and sustainability. If you looked at our population, we had a lot of people that were walking around that were overweight, they were carrying extra body weight. What does extra body weight equal? It equals chronic disease. If you look at all the studies, Cancer, hypertension, stroke, heart attack, it all stems from unhealthy lifestyle you know, decisions that were made. So I needed to bring into my model you know, preventative medicine, which includes exercise, eating right, healthy nutrition. That's how we're going to change healthcare. So the functional medicine side of this, let's check people, why are they fatigued? Is there something going on with their, their hormones? Are they not taking the right nutrients? Is the vitamin D level low? Some simple things. Maximizing all of that so their energy goes from a 2 to an 8. And then I treat them, I regenerate their joints, and you get this blend of an amazing outcome. I think it's really important that you just have something that separates you. So if you're going to deliver health care, it's either got to be better, more cost effective, affordable, or your delivery has to have more passion than, than somebody else. So consumers are going to make a, a decision based on your business. So you have to be able to be different and great at what you do. If you can deliver outcomes, when having a different offering, you'll capture that audience that you're trying to capture and make a difference. You know, I think the biggest thing I've learned is from my patients. You know, my patients come in and they're 30, 40 pounds overweight, and they've got low energy, they have no zest. Two months later, they leave our clinic and they're singing our praises. They've lost weight. They're wearing tighter clothes. They feel amazing. They look amazing. And now they're running and hiking because their knees work again without having to do surgery or cortisone shots. 
and we don't give pain medications here. So I think it's a test notice for my patient that I've taught me this is the way things need to be. So that's a snapshot of, of where our model's at right now. And as I said, uh, we were looked out outside the box, but the consumers are now seeking this type of model, and that's the exciting part is we, we were really just honored to be there and, and recognize. So essentially, how this all started was I was that trainer at, at Gold's Gym as I was trying to finish my master's degree, really believed in the nutrition and exercise, and I had a, a rugby injury that just wouldn't heal. And I played limp, played limp, played limp, and I was ready to give it up. But I had a patient that had a torn rotator cuff, and he said I went and saw this Dr. Baumgartner, and he fixed or gave me a couple injections, and I didn't have to have the surgery. So I said I'll try anything, and I went, and it was his last day at that Abbott North Restaurant Clinic, and they said they're shutting down and moving to the cities, but if you want to come see me, you can come see me at my practice. So that's what I did. I came and seen him at his practice when he just first opened. I was one of his first patients. And what happened is we just got and found a lot of common. I knew who he was because I saw him working out at the Gold's Gym because it was right right close to the clinic. And then when he started the clinic, it was just across the street. So he said, what are you going to do when you're done with grad school? And I said, I love to show the biggest loser. And when the doctor tells them to lose weight, they, they listen a lot better than me. And he says, that's interesting because my, my patients that are are diabetic. If, if I don't get them exercising and focusing on nutrition, they don't get better. If I have somebody with degenerative disc disease or knee arthritis, I can give them an injection, but I'm just covering it up if they don't restore function and start moving and, 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 and losing some of the weight. So he says, do you think you could join me? And so I did. So I was originally came on as a concierge to his practice. I was going to help all of his patients, almost like physical therapy. As soon as they were done with that, then they'd come see me for, for lifestyle. He knew I, I was known for, for nutrition over at the gym big time and getting people to lose weight. So that was the focus is what I was going to be. But what we found out is only about 10% of those patients that he had recommend that were overweight naturally wanted to exercise and eat better. And that's about the time where I started just doing everything there. I was on Facebook, and I saw a little link for how to, to market you know, system nine, it was clicked. And I clicked on it and then started getting emails from this guy and, okay, I'm going to go to Fitness Business Summit and I'm going to learn how to, to market. And it was all history from there. Started learning how to, to, to communicate with the audience, telling stories, email marketing the right way, telling why we thought healthcare needed its fixes, really leveraging the fact of that we're different than other places right there. And very soon after I started there, I went from you know, not being able to train there. So we went and had two or three trainers that trained out of Snap Fitness because I could only, you know, ha have myself in that one small room. And then after 10 months, we had 120 patients. And then we went and opened up this place, which was a 6,000 square foot shell, which was perfect. It was great. We continued to grow like crazy using all the, the different marketing avenues, really focus on getting results and building a community inside of our, our facility. Um, really doing all the, the elements of what the, the other successful um, programs were doing that we, we learned from and just continued to see success. But there was a little bit of disconnect because we'd have to send them six miles across town to go to the clinic and everything if they started there. And that's where we, we came together for a couple of years ago. Um, this, this December was two years that we moved into our new building, which we're, we're all together and everything. And this is 26,000 square foot space and right when we moved into this new building we knew we were being success. It was our medical fitness that was growing our clinic from this total model and, and continuing to, to drive patients into this preventative model. So we went from just the, the little small known clinic that didn't get many referrals to the community was really buying into what we were doing from a total medical perspective. So we said we got to start putting this model out there and continue to, to learn in my masterminds of how do we, we scale this thing in you know, we started adding that first year. We had seven or eight different people that bought our, our license in, and five that bought our franchise of Exact Rejuve Medical. And now we have 26 locations that are doing that I'm coaching and, and teaching how to do there. So we find the right trainers that go and do what I did. Start very small, and how do we progressively grow into getting better? How do we integrate these to get these systems to talk together? And I'll, I'll show more of that in just a minute. But this is an idea of we just did start with, when I came, I was the fourth employee at the front desk, Dr. Baumgartner, and he had an, um, a part-time physical therapist, and then he had a medical assistant. 
but now we, we have four different doctors and a neurosurgeon. We do have nurse practitioners that, that do the functional medicine component of there because the, the physicians are really busy with the orthopedics and regenerative injections. We do have physical therapists, dietitian, nutritionists, on-site pharmacy. We use athletic trainers to help with the, the bracing as well as, as physician extending athletic game coverage. And we call our trainers medical fitness specialists. So we look for trainers that understand this isn't about driving people to the ground. Now don't get me wrong, when we start, we, 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 we market medically supervised fitness. So we do see a lot of obese people with diabetes, a lot of injured patients, and then the, the, the education basis has to be a strong e emphasis on progressive and corrective exercise. So it's not about beating people on the ground. But we do have plenty that, that know we get results that are very fit. We do have Olympic athletes that come through our facility, and we do have a hardcore athletic program and some people do want to be sore and beat up the next day, so we try to give people what they want, but we really want trainers that understand that, and that's why we, we're, we want to be so connected to, to the Functional Aging Institute, and I've been having such a great interest to be on the board all along, is we need the type of trainers that understand how to work with the elderly, the injured patients, because this is the population that needs our help most. And where you see our MedFit models, is any type of clinic, whether it's family practice, I've helped an OBGYN clinic, pain management clinics, to peer functional medicine, to a chiropractic facility, it doesn't necessarily matter. We've seen nutrition senators, like one after the last wellness summit right there, has a, her own nutrition clinic and wants to add this component to her nutrition clinic in her health food store. You do see a lot of medical fitness centers in hospitals, but as I said, they're, they're usually disconnected from an integration standpoint where we have it, it's good, it's, a, it's more of a gym setting versus our goal is to get these systems to talk together and to create a synergy and a referral partnership amongst all the departments, which I'll get to in a minute. So physical therapy clinics, chiropractic, we are now in three naturopath clinics, could be its own standalone gym. So we, we have one guy that's a peer, two, two gentlemen that are peer investors that knew the gym market and said, I want to operate this, how do I add medical components or hire a physician to come in and each state has different laws and that's not my goal of this presentation day, but there are those opportunities. And then just a, such a, a large growing niche and opportunity because of our medical leverage to get in and provide corporate wellness and companies. So the old model of healthcare was sickness, doctor treatment, injury, and now our focus is continued treatment, prescribe that medical fitness, evaluate through functional movement screening and pain scales, doing health risk assessments, and really focusing on not just the healthy lifestyles, but the behavior to help make this change stick and balance that total health to have the prevention of sickness and injury. So when you look at our model, it is medical fitness, sports and orthopedics, and functional medicine. As I mentioned earlier, when these people came here, only about 10% that were there actually wanted to exercise. They either wanted a, a medicine or an injection that would make the pain go away. When we started really learning how to do market medical fitness, when these people come in, we do a lot of low barrier offers. And what we do is two different things. So we do an intake. If they are fatigued, overweight, have diabetes, and I'll show you in a couple of slides what this program is, I'd really like you to see our nurse practitioner so we can do a health risk assessment so we can safely progress you and take some blood labs and monitor you along you and your, our journey. So about 30% of patients go directly into the clinic right away. So we didn't quite realize that medical fitness was going to be our number one reason why our clinic was growing. So second part is we do a, a combination of a great cook functional movement screening with a PT dysfunction and pain rating to where if they come and they do a hip hinge and it's dysfunctional, Mrs. Jones, I'd like you to get over to physical therapy first so we can explain some corrective exercise. We do have a few of the medical fitness specialists that are really good at corrective exercise. They know how to take it from there. But if they do that squat and it's painful, I'd really like you to see Dr. Baumgartner so we can get an understanding of what's happening there because the last thing we want to do is either further aggravate the problem or make it worse or not know the correct solution and there's nothing worse than trying to exercise through chronic pain and having that inflammation on your body. You won't want to continue to do it. So all in all, and then the third component is at times they may not want to go here or here because they have their only fact, family practice doctor or they already trust their other chiropractor or doctor, but about 40% of people that come on low barrier offers end up directly into these two things and the other 30% 
when we are monitoring, when they're not seeing results, when we are prescribing, okay, you're trying really hard, you're exercising well, you're eating well, but you're not moving, let's go get a metabolic test. Let's, let's take a, some labs and see why your, your body's not losing weight. So we have the ability to bust through plateaus using all of our different food sensitivity and different outcomes, and that's a topic for another day. We teach all of our trainers all the different medical solutions that could be holding one back from seeing the results, and that's still my favorite part of how you know I'm now able to help more people than I was personally ever before in a gym by having these different outcomes. This is just a snap um, look into our facility when you come through the door that we have the different avenues of pe where people can go. This on the, the right hand side is our levels of fitness where when grandma comes through the door on day ones, we're not doing burpees and turf. That's not how we work. We want to do basic movement exercises. They graduate, then we're starting light free weights, then we're, we're doing some balance and proprioceptive, and then we're doing more aggressive movements. So that's really what we call our levels of fitness for progressing people appropriately. When people now enter, and, and before when I said they go over to the clinic right away, they qualify and it's ran through insurance, and I do have a few practices that don't want to do insurance that are just purely cash based. They essentially, it's if they have a BMI over 30, if they do have diabetes, or they do have fatigued or lightheadedness when they're doing there, if they do have chronic pain or using medications, we get them over to the clinic and it's usually covered through insurance. And then we want to monitor six months plus to a year. After the program, and this is something all gyms I recommend doing when anybody leaves a lifetime maintenance program, it's twofold. You care enough to follow up and see if they're still being successful, but it's also a retention call. So for instance, they've been gone for two months. Hey, Mrs. Jones, how are you doing? And if they are struggling, you should be able to reactivate a good component. When people go over our clinic, we are doing that, that health history medication review. We do do biometric testing with the BIA, so we don't want to just lose muscle. I mean, fat, I mean, we don't want them losing muscle at the same time they're losing weight. We want to make sure we're pervert, preserving that muscle and making sure we're losing weight appropriately. We do take that comprehensive blood panel. Now at that same time, if they are fatigued or menopausal, we will recommend different visits through either the hormones or orthopedics. But during those, these, this test, we also do metabolic testing um, so we know the right calorie scores to put them at. We do bio scores which measure some external basic factors, which you see in a lot of people, is our goal is to measure outcomes, is when we eventually are going to get this all paid through insurance, we want to say we get the best outcomes. So we are looking at all these internal factors, and I'll show you how that matters. Now the fitness component is just training, and again, it's not much different other than we use levels of fitness, our nutrition. We do have health coaches here. We do have behavioral group sessions, um, and we have an RD. But now this is our system, and again, it can be done differently on, on how we're, we're measuring our outcomes. So we're taking all the, the external biometrics, and then we also take during that blood lab the cholesterol, the glucose, the triglycerides, and now even insulin levels that we're putting in there. So an internal and external score, and then we have what they call the medical and orthopedic limitations. So if somebody's straight out of cardiac rehab, we want, to, again, not to push that heart rate higher than what they want. If they have... Um, to, to knee replacements, maybe we're not doing box jumps right out of the gates or anything like that. And then so then we had our levels of fitness, which I showed you, and we combine all this that I show you to create a score. So again, that external, maybe it's a health score of 60 based on their waist to hip ratio. Internally, um, their LDLs may be really high. They do have COPD. They have been moving and are into lightweight. So this now app gives our our trainers some guidance after they went on that medical side that, okay, probably shouldn't be doing crazy exercises out of the gates, and hey, it's not just about losing the 10 pounds for this person, it's making sure that they're alive in the next 10 years, and they're, they're lowering their risk of heart attack by bringing this number from a 55 to a 85. So now we're much more than just a gym and having a weight scale. We are medically integrate, and that's what our, our program is when we use BioScores. And then the other part, we believe education is linked to, to retention. So this is where we say consistency. We've grown like crazy, and we want people to get that education from our, our, our behavioral eventualist, our doctor, our, our registered dietitian, and our doctor. So these are just templated um, basic education that they go and watch. And then when they pass their educational component, they can go test out of their fitness component and try to work their way up to whatever belt that they want to be. So our whole focus is on getting outcomes and better results. So a lot of people ask, how does this apply to, to you? And, and a lot of you have been on here, and, and it comes down to a few different things, is we need the right people. 
because building these successful medical fitness practices, it's about the team. You need the compassionate, you need the, the skilled, the, the hungry, the, the ones that, that really want to make a difference, that focus on getting results versus just counting reps and sessions and trainers, and we're only as good as there. These programs only start out with physicians. They're not about getting rich quick. It's we need the right personnel. We need to develop. It's hard to. It's taken us six years to where we get. So it's a slow, slow system of, of implementing one comport, component at a time. Just like any facility, if you're going to grow and, and have a successful visit, visit, you must deliver more value than what you charge, and you must generate results. We need patient-centered people, compassionate, and our people need to know that we care. When if this is starting to stimulate thoughts in your mind, these are the things that I go over when I'm meeting with the physician is I start to think, what type of patient practice are, the, are they going to be in? So are they working in a community that is in Arizona dealing with a, a lot of boomer populations? So then we're going to focus on more of a, um, a functional solution outcome facility that's going to work with more of those. So we need to know how we're going to mac it market or is it just going to be for the patients? I have some practices that are very busy that don't want to necessarily have 100 new patients coming in versus a, a, a goal like ours growing a, a bigger clinic is we need to outreach to the community to draw them into there. So we want personal service, we want accountability, we want the app in to, to drive home that technology. Functional and corrective exercise versus some are just equipment like techno gym come in your circle and yes we can track outcomes but some, there's a different things. There's a difference between an integrated and independent. I mentioned a lot of hospital systems are independent. They're connected together, but they don't talk together and work together like ours does. Open access. So when we first started in that small room, they couldn't come on the days in between. Our facility now, if they're doing one-on-one, -on -one, they can come on the days in between. And again, how will we fill the funnel? We didn't recognize it was going to be that way, but when they come through the door, are we doing functional movement screening? Are we getting to that, that clinic? So much like I started, you only really need, if you're, you're trying to think of doctors who to partner with or anything like that, if, if one of the locations that I'm going to show you isn't worth you applying or, or you think this is a good fit for you, you really only need to go tell a doctor that we need 80 square foot to start this out of like I did. Um, when you do have more square feet, like a physical therapy space, a lot of orthopedic groups do have sizes like this available, especially on off hours, the morning, um, the PM and the PM where, where the PTA departments close down that we can get three to six trainers at a time and have larger groups. And then you could also do what we do. There's a lot of independent gyms out there that die if you pay for the memberships of, of their place to allow you to come in and cha change. Our dance and gymnastic centers or just like we did, built out our own facility to where these can do. But what we need are the right people that are implementers. So when we're just starting, we need people that have the skills to do it all. So that's not just a good trainer but is willing to go network, do the, do the marketing, um, do admin and billing, and as we have clients coming in and we're, we maintain costs, then we hire an administrative person to maybe run the front desk, do bill, billing and payroll. And as we continue to grow, you hire subsequent trainers to continue to grow and develop it. So we're looking for people every time we start a new one, which I'll show you at the end, we need an implementer that is going to direct and grow this thing right there. But then in a lot of locations, we do have plenty of people that say, I just really want to work with the medical fitness. I don't want to manage. I don't want to do the business side of things. Then, yes, we need the, the Functional Aging Institute members that understand progressive and cor corrective exercise. So why is this important right now is because society more than ever needs to create real health for our patients and reverse the chronic disease. When we do add one of these medical fitness, it, it makes an undeniable dis difference in our community. And we have separated ourselves from other clinics, and that's what the other clinics that we partner with are, are really trying to be different. There's a lot of orthopedic groups that are competing against each other. Medical fitness is that, that difference maker, it is leading the mission. Our whole team is knowing we're just not covering up. They're on fire because we know we're trying to, to change lives and make there. So you get a, a mission and purpose driven team that, that, that really helps making a difference. It is pretty simple to add to any clinic that does have an open office or a PT space, so it can be very low offer. And like say, let's say you had an entrepreneurial mind and it's not one of our clinics. You could go and say, hey, you have nothing to lose. I'll give you a 50% split as long as I can train people out of here and then you could leverage the, the name of, a, of the medical facility and what you're doing training.
what I t always try to explain the benefits for clinics that we're starting up is they don't have to do anything with it. Dr. Baumgartner in our case did nothing. I, I built this for him. I integrated I just filled his schedule right there. He had to be confident in what I was doing and that's just by not injuring people and, and being a good person and, and knowing that I, I had a experience in it. But it's, it's building them a practice that isn't just provide on the income. So deductibles re usually reset in January. Well, that's when he can go take his vacation. We usually have our best months of the year in January and February. It does decrease the, the need for medications for his patients. It does diversify and build a, a model that's cash friendly. It does satisfy, create some better outcomes. We are known for getting the best outcomes in our community for regenerative orthopedics and functional medicine because we're focusing on exercise and nutrition. It doesn't create constant new referrals to the practice. This is why we've grown is because of medical fitness. It is easy to market um, and difference. A lot of patients are scared to go to the Gold's Gym or Planet Fitness, but if you use that, that medical leverage, it's, it's easier to market. They are highly motivated popular, so they make for patient, better patients. There is a lot of synergy. Addition is when you help somebody lose 100 pounds, they become lifelong patients and they become walking billboards for your entire clinic. Again, medical clinics can use their position of authority for a medical unique selling position that is different. And it can, it can complement the current medical practice to increase revenue in much like the boomer market. It's an untouched market. Medical fitness is an untouched market as well. And then stay ahead of the competition by being the first in the area that, that uses medical fitness. We believe it is a perfect storm because the healthcare crisis isn't going away. Costs of doing business in medicine continue to rise. Consumers are driving this model. They are seeking better care. They're, they're tired of the, the past health, are tired of where healthcare is just to cover up right now and they know it. So they're seeking functional medicine, doctor. They're seeking preventative care. And the opportunity is now to make a change, much like the, the oil market. Those that see unique niches in before this comes and every facility has to happen, usually does win the race. So where we need your help and why, why Dan and Cody have been so gracious to allow me in is I, I call those guys and I say, we're, we're growing and I don't have, I have trainers, but they just don't understand how to help these populations the way they do. If we can teach them the business and marketing, we already have these systems, they can execute it, they're hard working and ready to go, but I need people that I can to deal with patients that are high risk or that are aging or that are injured to do this. and. The, the training certification they have goes hand in hand with the right and smart trainers that we're looking to run this. So currently right now we continue to grow. We are looking for directors in medical fitness specialists. Each each clinic usually starts with two is that that implementer uh, a couple months after they get going they bring on the medical fitness specialist. So Bradenton right now we're interviewing for Lexington, Kentucky, New York, New York and Manhattan, Monterey, California. I put Lexington in there twice. My apologies, Fredericksburg, Virginia. Lexington. Um, yeah, ma I, making I it look the you know, more attractive for, than it really is. The applications for Honolulu are probably rolling in a little faster than Savage, Minnesota, right about now. I'm guessing. Probably so. <laughs> and, and those are just opening. We just signed an agreement with them, but they they, they know what they're doing. This is actually one um, one lady and her husband. That they already have a practice in Plano, Texas, but want to open a destination clinic in Honolulu. So that we're we're looking at real estate. They are doing this model, but we're implementing in Plano, Texas, right now, as a as a as we're starting the application process. But the so we so we work. make this the other really, one's already signed and open. I want to make sure we make this really easy and really clear for people that aren't on this live because they're not going to be able to stop us and ask questions for for people listening to the recording. Basically, you just want them to email their resume and cover letter to you there at jr at rejuvemedical.com if, if they've got yep. any, any interest in, in in these positions. And my hunch is in, in six weeks, you're going to have uh, six more markets opening up. Um, yeah, I know you're growing fast, so so if people are looking for, for training opportunities, um, just email a resume and cover letter to you, and uh, and you'll, that that's the simplest way. It. Simplest way? Okay. Yes, it would help me though if, if you're more interested in the director or the medical fitness specialist. Two distinct differences, the directors, they, they're more tied to the growth, but they need to be able to grow a team. They, they got to be ready to go out there and work harder 
and it's and it's not a part-time gig. It's we need them to really hustle and grow a practice out of the thing and be confident in public speaking and networking and following all the systems, putting out the email marketing out there. Versus some people just want to come train and help okay. and and be the there. And so there's two there they're two very distinct positions. So if in that cover letter we could be told which one that would more suit you, we're needing both. Okay, great, great. So that's that. And then the last thing are, are just different links and articles for, for people to click on that maybe you don't, this clinic doesn't make sense and you're not ready to locate and there's some interest on some level. I would teach you and you could email me to the same place. How do I go to my local clinic or present? You can have this PowerPoint and customize it and go show them and present that this could work for you in their clinic right there. There's how do you you go get medical referrals? How do you, you know, do some of these things right there? Flex dollars and HSAs do pay for this program if medically supervised. So these are just different tools that we use in our medical community and how to grow. So feel free to use them at there. It's just some things I wanted to give for for you for for tuning in today and, and okay. Just thank you so much for your time. So so Jr. Because we did get that question early on from Pat um, Evans. She asked if she could get a copy of the slides. So if people want to copy your slides or they can get some of those great links to resources um, that you just want them to email you for the PowerPoint. Is that the simplest thing to do? Yep. So maybe if they're not looking at any of these locations and that resume, how do I get some of these tools in this PowerPoint and the email and I'll send it right over. Okay, great. So again, that's jr at rejuvemedical.com if you want the PowerPoint slides. Um, Dina asks if you have any reju re rejuve or reju rejuvenative <laughs> physicians in Silicon Valley because um, she's looking for how she can do some some medical networking. Do you have any connections in the Silicon Valley area? I don't, I'm, I got kicked out of 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th grade school pretty much, so I don't even know where the Silicon Valley is, so, um, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, so, it's uh, uh, San Jose, Mountain View, California, uh, maybe, maybe Dina can give us a little, little more yes. geography on that, but, uh, I do uh, have a, a doctor that's looking and interested in getting ready to go in San Jose, California, okay. so I do have his contact. If you want to email me and tell me specifically that, I would love to, to connect you with them because that's kind of how do I put this in my practice. He's just about reestablishing. But all these physicians, it hinges upon finding the right director and implementer that could go make this happen. When they have somebody that approaches them and they have interest, that's what they need to solidify their confidence. So okay. I definitely know somebody in that area. Uh, Pam is wondering if there are any plans for a location in Las Vegas. Absolutely. We have one that is in the, the works. We have a, a clinic that is a regenerative specialist. Then they're very big into stem cells and, and PRP. They're, they're going to be actually be open in six months or so. The doctor that we actually work with here, Dr. Cass, is going there because they're one of our affiliate partners on the stem cell, moving there to start and operate that clinic, and they are adding the medical fitness component to it. So that is, is okay. in the near future. All right. Well, Pam, I, uh, I suggest you contact JR so you can get in on the ground floor there. Um, how about options for uh, San Francisco and Chicago? I don't know of any in San Francisco. Um, Chicago, we have one location already, and they're always looking for medical fitness specialists. That's in Naperville, Chicago, or Naperville, Illinois, which is a suburb, I believe, yep. west by 20 or 30 miles. Yep. So there are they're, they're one of our fastest growing medical fitness centers, so there's a medical fitness position there open, but I don't have any other physician prospects at the moment there. So for folks, because I see the geography questions keep pouring in, for folks that want to find out how Rejuve is growing, where your location map is, do you guys have a website for that where people can go to find out your sort of your national locations? Um, MyMedFit.com is kind of our, our medical fitness site, but right now we are hosting and getting ready for our summit and everything right there, so it doesn't necessarily have that map. It's more of our, our summit right now. Um, the map of the other locations, it's kind of on this other the slides way back that had some of those bullets right now. We have, have 26. Like I said, when I, I, I contact these physicians, a lot of them, I've, I've gone and speak at a lot of these conferences. 
a lot of them take usually six months to a year and a half before they say yes. Yeah. So they try to, how do I fit this in my practice? How do I find the right person? So even though they haven't signed a license agreement with us, that's why I say San Jose, there's you know a hundred leads that I have that I sure. try to work to make this happen and how do they make sense of it. So okay. when I get those emails and they say that, that, that does me a world of wonder when I do have an interested physician from Tempe, Arizona. I say, hey, I have three trainers that I know right off the bat that may be a fit. Maybe it'd be good for you to have a conversation because sometimes they're even scared of risk. And again, maybe you have the entrepreneur mind that says, well, I would love to partner in this and how do we share, you know, the, the risk right, and overhead and right. then your partners in it. So, right, because I mean, that's really those opportunities. I mean, that's really how this thing started. Was you met with uh, Dr. Baumgartner and and you wanted to do the fitness side of it, and uh, and he, he was sort of open to starting that. So, so Terry mm -hmm. um, is in the. I'm guessing is in the Phoenix area. Terry, I'm just going to recommend that you contact Jr. at his email there and and let him know you're interested in the Phoenix area. I think you guys have a location in the Tucson area. Is that correct, Dr. Tate? We do have a location in the Tucson area, um, but I do have a prospect in Phoenix that is looking, and I have one in where's that other the other Prescott that okay. is looking to open as well. Okay, great, great. Um, well, folks, we got about uh, three more minutes for questions. If you have any other questions for Jr., um, strongly encourage you to reach out to him at his email, whether you're listening to this live or on the recording. Um, Send him your resume and cover letter if you think you're interested in a director or a uh, medical fitness specialist position. Um, just reach out to him. I know he's looking for more and more contacts because I, I know I know one of his his challenges was just finding more quality trainers. So, um, Martin Pisani, great question. He's wondering about how the services are priced. Um, that's that's probably a lengthy question, I'm guessing, Martin. But JR, I can answer JR, halfway JR, JR, if you want to answer some of it, and then Martin can certainly shoot yeah. you an email. So there's two components. When we talk about the, the the clinic side, if they meet some of those risk factors and the clinic takes insurance, that's ran through insurance. On the, the training side, I would say it's not much different. In some markets, when we're just starting, we, we do half-hour sessions, um, and it's priced anywhere if they're at three times a week they're probably at thirty dollars a session if at two thirty five and forty at one time a week that's when clinics usually just start now as you grow and get more volume you you raise your prices so our price right now for programs are fifty five dollars for a half hour fifty for for two times a week and forty five for for three times a week but that's just not a training session what we do is add value we have the breaking barriers the the weekly dietitian sessions, the, the journaling, the online university. We try to stack the value and don't try to sell sessions. We sell our program. But that's just some of the basic one-on-one -on -one prices. And then we drop every session by $10 if doing group per time a week. And then we have in our bigger facilities the boot camps where it's much, you know, anywhere from $90 a month to $147. So hopefully that gives you a short end of it, but not much different than your, your other traditional fitness facilities. Yeah, cool, cool. Martin, you should definitely reach out to JR. Uh, he's somebody you would want in your contact circle. Martin says, cool, thanks, you should charge more. So, <laughs> as always, as I always, don't charge disagree. More. Yeah, as always, <laughs> charge more. Um, all right, final question from Joseph Griffith. Um, what are the prereqs or prerequisites for your medical fitness specialist position? For the medical fitness um, position, we're looking for a qualified certification. Um, that's why I've been in seen and been live to, to the certification process. Those that have the Functional Aging Institute certification, I know they get it. Those that have the NASM de degrees, they, they have a higher certification. Um, those that have done the great cook and the corrective exit seminars, just like before the pre-conference, at, at Arizona right there is a, a corrective exercise session. So we're looking for somebody that gets that this isn't just about training people through the ground. For this facility, like I said, we do see athletes, but I'm not looking for the CSCS too typically. I'm looking for the person that, that wants to either focus more on weight management, injured or aging population, because that's the, the bulk of our, our main demographics okay. um, of, of where we see. So one more reason for for everyone listening here to 
complete your functional aging specialist or go ahead and start it if you haven't already. So, uh, JR, thanks so much for all you're doing in the industry, for your passion to improve healthcare, and, and thanks for giving us a whole hour of your time today. Thanks so much. Thank you all so much. Appreciate your time.